Hi, I'm T2 and I support GenX Grown Up through Patreon because they're super gentle to my wires and boards. I think you should too. Go to patreon.com forward slash GenX Grown Up. Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up podcast listener, to this episode 153 of the Gen X Grown Up podcast. <laughs> I'm John. Joining me, as always, of course, is George. Hey, man. Hey, how's it going, guys? You know, it wouldn't be a show without Mo. How's it going, everybody? In this episode, we return to a galaxy far, far away to catch up on the events after the fall of the Empire, check out a new high-quality lighting solution to make you look better on your next Zoom meeting, and we break out the chess pieces for the Game of Kings in a way the Kings never imagined possible. Those topics and many more coming your way in this episode of the show, but first, it is time for some fourth listener email. Look, just three of us. We know we're going to listen. If anybody else takes time to listen, it's the fourth listener. And I know, George, not you. <laughs> this time around, the fourth listener is... Jay, Jay just, wrote in. A, instead of doing the disclaimer, you just need to stop saying it. Well, but I plowed right through it. Uh, look, I would like people to think you listen. <laughs> I was not going to say anything about it. Then you're the one that went, mm, 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 so. I mean, I would like women to think I'm gorgeous and to have a million dollars, but liking well, something don't make it so. Come on, let's, let's, do, let's do something attainable, can we? The fourth listener this time is Jay, who wrote in the subject line, Diving Sub. Yeah. Oh, so another one, huh? Yeah, here's what Jay has to say. Longtime listener, second time emailer, and Gen X Patreon er. I like that. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Taking it back to your comic book ad rewind episode, mm-hmm. when I heard the words baking soda and diving sub put together, every hair on my body stood up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a visual. Yeah. Right, I know, right? So you want to see a visual? Wait for this. So here we go. Every May, just before school was going to get let out for the summer, a group of us idiot kids would rifle through our (laughs) comics and order a couple of diving subs each and wait. Like every summer? Yeah, every summer. Every summer. (laughs) Yeah. Just just you wait. That's a lot of subs. Yeah. School ended. Four weeks later, they came. Ah, the glory. (laughs) Then, when the 4th of July came, the whole block was in their lawn chairs up and down the street. We had that kind of neighborhood. It was awesome. And just as the sun went down, we set up the subs. Had the baking soda out, packed it in. We each had a bucket full of water, and there it went, up and down, and it was awesome. (laughs) Everyone was stoked to see it. Okay. But... There's a big butt here. All right. Then the real fun came. After 10 minutes of that amazing science, it was time for the grand finale. Then we loaded the subs with M80s and blew the hell out of them. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So I now remember this email. I remember seeing it come in, and my first Uh thought was, wait a minute. I don't think an M80 would fit in one of those plastic subs. So swear to God... I went and checked the measurements of M80 <laughs> just to see. I don't have the sub with me to check the measurement, but they're really like, they're they're kind of like chunky. two and a quarter inches long. And like, well, I, I mean, think it was a quarter inch in circumference or something or one and a uh-huh. quarter inch in circumference. It's crazy. Well, maybe well, they just put them all into a bucket with the M80s and just had the whole thing go off. Oh, <laughs> there's okay. always electrical tape. I mean, you can strap it <laughs> this on. This is true. Sure. Duct tape works. <laughs> right. It, it might not surface with that kind of weight, but I'm sure it'll blow up just fine. <laughs> the blowing up part, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> the attaching. I don't think they packed it inside with the baking powder. You're right. <laughs> oh, he says, awesome summers. I won't tell you what we did to the sea monkeys on the fourth, though. Oh, God. Yeah. No, I'm good. Let's yeah, move let's on. Let's that one. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't tell us. Thank you for that. Yes. Jay, we, we appreciate your writing in with your tales of 4th of July chaos. Uh, if you would like your email featured here on this show, it is drop dead easy. Just fire off an email to podcast at genxgrownup.com. Read every single one. And most of them, like Jay's, will eventually make the show. With that good business behind us, it is time to jump into the body of 153 right after this. Wait, are you gaming? On a Chromebook? Yep. It's got a high-res 120 hertz display, plus this killer RGB keyboard. And I can access thousands of games anytime, anywhere. Stop playing. What? Get out of here. Huh? Yeah. I want you to stop playing and get out of here so I can game on that Chromebook. Got it. Discover the ultimate cloud gaming machine. A new kind of Chromebook. 
be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show too. It helps more than you know. Lilt makes curls so easy. Lilt makes body so easy. Lilt makes the difference so easy. Beautiful hair is easy with Lilt Home Perm. Only Lilt has sponge wraps for foolproof roll-ups for easy care hair. Lilt makes the difference so easy. Let's get going talking about media then that we have been checking out. Now, as you know, this could be a books or film or music or comics or television or whatever it is that we have been enjoying. And I'd like to start with you, Mo. What have you yeah. been checking out? Oh, I was looking forward to this show for a long time. It's the new Star Wars series, Ahsoka. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Right. I loved her character. It's, it's, it's cool because it started off as an animated character in okay. um, Clone Wars. Then they did a whole bunch of it in Rebels. She was in Rebels. Then they came back and did a final season of Clone Wars, which was heavy as hell. I don't know if that was made for kids or not. There's a lot of deep stuff in that. Mm. And now it's live action. Rosario Dawson stars in it. And let me tell you, mm-hmm. she's always been a badass. She's still a badass. I'm really enjoying this series. I don't know if you guys, <laughs> either of you had a chance to check it out. No, I've purposefully waited because I know they're releasing them weekly like they did the first two and then weekly after that so i'm gonna wait till the whole series comes out this character and the actors playing her they brought her in from mandalorian season two i think it was oh she showed up there episode episode or two there yeah Yeah. and so they brought her in from that so they're doing a lot with the mandalorian stuff where they're spinning off these other shows like the Mm -hmm. boba fett show and now Mm -hmm. this they're building a really nice television network that makes disney plus almost a must-have Mm-hmm. They, I mean, it mm-hmm. really does, George, because they also tie in the animated stuff because this now has live action characters who are in um, Rebels in it, right. which is cool. Yep. So and it, I, the one thing, it don't, if there was a negative to the show, it's you really need to see some of these other animated ones and these other shows to really understand fully what's going on. That's the big criticism I guess I have, of, if anything, about this is that you're almost kind of forced. And of course, if you go to Disney Plus now, they actually have like a an essential <laughs> Ahsoka Oh, watch really? list <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to catch you up on everything. So at least they thought about that. But yeah, mm-hmm. but like I said, I yeah. think the show so far is first two episodes dropped. Um, I think it's off to a really strong start. Well, you kind of touched on something I was going to ask you, but I still I'm very fascinated by the fact that these came from the animated. You guys are mm-hmm. much better Star Wars fans than I am. Uh, I, I, I've i watched also the movies, but I've ignored the animated series. But I always hear people say, boy, this is really good. The Clone Wars are really good or whatever. Mm-hmm. So the, the, kind of my question is is if I, as you were saying, Mo, if I only know the movies, how much would I get out of watching Ahsoka? Or is it really, I need to know more of the texture of these miniseries? You'd probably just, you'd be probably a little lost for a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, the basic plot isn't that heavy to understand, really. They're looking for a friend and some other stuff that happened at the end of um, Rebels. But because the main bad guy they're trying to bring back was the bad guy in Rebels. So that's like kind of the tie into that. Um, But other than that, Rebels is one of the animated shows or? Uh, Rebels is in the anime series, yes. Um, And I think that if you understand that part of it, like even if you watch like the last couple of episodes of Rebels, I think you'd be fine, quite honestly. Um, Uh But I think you would get some out of it, but I think you would feel lost and you'd probably be looking on the internet to help you catch Hmm. up. (laughs) Okay. That's why Disney has their essential things to watch, right? (laughs) John, just so you're aware, if you decide that you want the backstory, you're talking about seven seasons of Clone Wars. That's why yeah. I asked, right? Because I right. know there's a lot out there. Yeah. There's also a film that was in between the last season and uh, the final season in the first six seasons. Oh, an animated film. Also, okay. Yeah, an animated yeah. film. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. There's also Rebels, which I think, Mo, correct me, is like three seasons, maybe? Three or four. Three or four. Three or four, something mm. like that. Yeah. So you're committing a large amount of time just to play catch up. Personally, the thing that Disney Plus put out, the essential mm-hmm. Ahsoka mm-hmm. catch-up stuff, I, oh, I can't <laughs> recommend something like that enough because there's no way to commit. I mean, yeah. seven seasons of, what, 20 episodes apiece, roughly? I mean, that's a lot of time. Yeah, and even Ahsoka's character herself, there's a lot mm-hmm. of layers to her character that if you watch this stuff, you'll understand, like, she's not a Jedi, really. She actually quit Ooh, okay. the Jedi Ooh. because she said that was too black and white. Things are too absolute with them. So she's kind of in the middle, you know, which also means that, you know, she's not going to be following the same rules necessarily as the Jedi follow and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. which you wouldn't necessarily get because they keep referring to her as a Jedi. And she just doesn't correct them because that's what people kind of see someone lightsaber. That's what they think. But well, she's really you not. think that. <laughs> it's something okay. definitely I think if you like the series at all, definitely worth mm-hmm. the investment. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, the acting, the story, everything is really good. To me, it's just 
easy as good as the Mandalorian. So not oh, the way to keep right. going on there. But yeah, that's quite that's a recommendation. What I got. Yeah. So John, actually, you saw something. I'm really interested to get your opinion on. It's a new movie that's come out, right? <laughs> yeah, and I was looking forward to this. We talked about it a little bit. This is the uh, uh, it's the dog movie called Strays, <laughs> right? It has all star cast. We like Will Ferrell and Jamie Fox and Randall Park and Will Forte. Uh, you know, like tons of people. Josh Gad, I think, is even a voice in it. And when we talked about this, and it's a super raunchy, uh, do- it's an like R-rated dog movie, right? In fact, in the poster, the dog has the R-rated, like, for restricted audiences in his teeth to make sure you know, the dog knows he's in a dirty movie. <laughs> <laughs> and it's F-bombs all over the place. George, you looked at the trailer for this thing over on Rated yeah. Gen X. And- yeah, they did a red band trailer for a dog yeah. voiceover movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they did. And my concern going into this movie, I knew I'd go see it. My concern, though, was this is going to be like The Good Boys, like that show where it's it's a mm-hmm. it's a dirty, funny comedy, um, yeah. which are always fun. But all the best parts are going to be in the trailer. So and, and I, as expected, I went to see it and I'm happy to report a lot of good stuff was in the trailer, but it was also a good movie on its own. I was oh. stunned throughout the movie. I'm like, oh, my God, there's a good movie here. Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, yeah, they're dropping <laughs> F-bombs. Yes, he's on a quest, quest to bite off his owner's dick. Yes, he's <laughs> running around doing crazies. That's the plot. That's the plot, right? Well, what it is, he has an abusive owner and the owner tries, keeps trying to get rid of him by, you know, taking him out in the woods and throwing the ball and driving. He keeps coming back. Mm-hmm. And he's finally determined, oh, my owner really isn't playing a game with me. He hates me because he, he befriends these other three dogs who are going to try to help him get home. But okay. during their journey, he's realizing, well, why am I going home? And so he's decided, well, he doesn't really love me. He's mean to me. So what I'll do is I'll destroy the only thing he truly loves, <laughs> which is his dick. <laughs> yeah. So that's the their best adventure. thing about that description that you were giving there, John, honestly, to me yeah. from watching the trailer originally, I still haven't seen the film yet. I plan to, mm-hmm. but was the name of the game is fetch fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I fetch go out and fuck. fetch. And when I come back, the owner says, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And what you might not be expecting, everything you want out of a raunchy comedy is there. D- dirty jokes, innuendo, potty humor, sex jokes, all that is in there. What I didn't expect is a couple of really awesome things in there. There's a story of friendship, of these dogs becoming closer to one another and opening up to each other. And there's like a Toy Story element in there where one of the dogs hates people. But as you find mm-hmm. out why, it's because of what happened to him that he no longer has a child to be with. Uh, two of the dogs have a relationship that's burning burgeoning, but it's not working out. On top of that, there's a story about love and loss in there of people that, you know, well, in this case, dogs, but it's about the stories of having people that you depend on or love or whatever, and not having them any longer. And finally, there's like this undertone. Well, that's probably undertone is not fair. A main through, through the through line of the film is it's about abusive relationships and how to deal with that. And, you know, how the dog feels mm. trapped, even though he thinks his owner loves him. But even once he realizes he doesn't, he still feels an affinity for his own owner like people in abusive relationships do Mm. and i didn't expect any of that to be in this dirty movie about dogs talking (laughs) and maybe the most the most startling note i saw in there that was more of a a burn on another movie than it wasn't a a accolade for this movie is that the cg lip sync in this film is better than justice league i'm like oh damn (laughs) (laughs) they're right (laughs) they're right yeah, I mean, I was a little wary about this movie because I figured it'd be either mm-hmm. good or horrible. You know, like, is I don't think it's going to mm-hmm. be like, eh, all right. Because even watching yep. the trailer, they're having to bleep out words like constantly. If you look at the trailer yeah. oh, on it, YouTube, yeah. and I'm like, it's a story about talking dogs. What the hell are they bleeping? If you're easily offended, you'll walk out 10 minutes in. I mean, oh, they don't really? pull any punches, profanity and like I said, dirty oh. stuff. I just thought it was funny. Unlike most of the movies I've seen this summer, and I've often said, great movie. I don't think I need to see it again. Mm-hmm. This was a great movie, and I can't wait to see it again. It was oh. There's stuff I missed because I was busy laughing. One-liners and zingers and... It was really good. So I know, Mo, you don't know yet. George, you're looking forward to seeing it. I have the good news for you is that you're going to love it. It's really good. You can turn your mind off to all the subtext and just watch dogs do st- dumb stuff. That's great. <laughs> yes, there's, yes, they're going to poop to get out of jail. That's the thing that's going to happen. But if you want to see a meaningful movie on top of that, you could turn your brain back on and that's here too. So I wholeheartedly all recommend right. Strays. Maybe maybe in my top two comedies of the year so far. Uh, it's right up, wow. right up there. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. So I'm very 
pleased. You have to look forward to. George, how about you? What have you been watching? Well, I, I went down the other mass market appeal route and I went to a superhero Ooh. movie. So Ooh. I saw okay. Blue Beetle. Uh, uh -huh. This is part of the often maligned DC universe of films. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, you get one good one for three bad ones is the way it seems <laughs> to go with DC mm -hmm. films. In this case, I think this just bought us three bad ones because I think this was actually a pretty good film. Oh, okay. uh, Blue Beetle takes place in fictional city that's essentially Miami or somewhere mm -hmm. South Florida ish. Mm -hmm. yep. And the, um, the main character, they take enough time, which they don't often do with the DC films and they build him up as a person so that you can care about him and his mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. uh, George Lopez plays the crazy uncle, which is <laughs> awesome. interesting because he does his George Lopez thing, but oftentimes I forgot he was George Lopez, which is oh, okay. very difficult to do if you've seen him in almost anything <laughs> yeah. that he does. Yeah, really. mm -hmm. um, I thought that the characters that they brought in that were the heavies from the corporate, uh, that stuff was all really nicely woven into the story. The tech and and the scarab, the blue beetle that embeds itself into his body, mm -hmm. according to George Lopez, through his through his asshole. Is <laughs> George Lopez, it went in through his asshole. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was it was so well put together for a DC film. I literally thought it was a Marvel movie. Oh, like okay. halfway through, yeah. I'm watching this, going, "Well, shit! I think Kevin Feige must have had something to do with this. This can't be a DC <laughs> film." Now mm -hmm. I know that this is. I believe the first in the quote unquote James Gunn DC films of his new stature at hmm. DC. Basically he's the new Kevin Feige mm -hmm. of DC. He's the, mm -hmm. the universe runner guy. So this yeah. is supposed to be the first of those films. Oh, awesome. I was, I was afraid this was like discarded, but it's not, it's part of his world. I'm so glad. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, from seeing the trailer, I mean, again, like it had a lot of strikes right off the bat, right? I mean, it's another superhero movie, which we're all like, Ugh. a DC mm -hmm. superhero movie, which we're all like, Ugh, you know, but <laughs> the trailer, I was like, I don't know. I was kind of like, eh, about it. Like I, I didn't see anything that said oh this is gonna be a better one than the rest i've seen because i guess trailers make anything look good right but right. i'm, I'm happy to hear actually that you uh that you liked it because i want to actually go see it <laughs> mm -hmm. i agree with you george i got i got a chance to see it i knew less than nothing about the blue beetle uh i mean blue beetle was like iron man to me when i first saw iron man i didn't know who iron man was i knew he was a superhero that's all i really knew and blue beetle mm -hmm. was like that for me i knew nothing about the blue beetle they're they're very similar characters by the way yeah. <laughs> they are kind of they? Kinda, i kind of was picking up on that counterparts yeah. in the universe now, this Blue Beetle is not the Tony Stark counterpart. It's a different one. Yeah. The one that they allude to in the film as being the previous Blue Beetle is 100% the Tony Stark kind of mm. counterpart. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. and now that you mentioned that, the, kind of his lair and the suits he had, his lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but in watching that, things that struck me, the first you already fixed for me, which was like, oh no, finally a good one and it's going to be erased because they're, the new James Gunn thing is going to start. I didn't know this was part of his universe. That's great. It sets up a sequel at, right at the end if it does well, mm -hmm. which I think it did well. It didn't have quite the polish that you want out of an amazing superhero movie. Like, for example, too much of the CGI was done in the dark. Like, there's a big battle goes on in a cave for a, like the third mm -hmm. act of the movie. And I'm like, what am I seeing? It's so dark. That's usually a giveaway that they're cut some corners on CG because CG in the dark is easier to look good or in the rain or something. But overall, it was a solid B superhero movie. And I maybe the last solid B superhero movie I got out of DC might have been the first Shazam that I really, really enjoyed. Yeah, see, I, I think you're way off base. This is absolutely an A superhero. You think it's movie, better than that? Me. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe you had an attachment yeah. to it ahead of time. It's definitely good. It's I did definitely not. positive. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, oh, you I knew very little about Blue Beetle. Oh, okay. Uh, I knew mm. just enough to say I've heard of him. That's about it. Yeah. But okay. me too. what I got from the film was enough to make me want to see a possible sequel and to want to also him, see him included in future DC films films because a the actor who we also you know we got him from cobra kai right <laughs> that's awesome uh, yeah he did a tremendous job in this movie mm -hmm. and not just in the way that he built up the superhero side of it you know the whole fumbling oh my god i don't want to kill anybody and the suit's like mm -hmm. no we must kill people and all this <laughs> now he he brought all that stuff 
to a nice human level, but also the interactions he had with his family, specifically when uh, his father's issue happens with his sister, who's always messing with him in ways that she still shows love, but still fucks up his life kind of the thing. way sisters do. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. The overprotective mother, the bat shit crazy as hell but awesome grandmother that i kind of wish had been my grandmother and might have (laughs) been because my grandmother was kind of a badass from a different part of the world but i really thought that they put together one of the better type of openings in the same way that feige did with the first iron man iron man and the hulk were the first jumping off points of the marvel cinematic universe Mm -hmm. and we all know everybody forgot about the hulk because of all (laughs) the controversies and everything and iron man has become the de facto this is what started the marvel universe i think blue beetle has the potential to do that here now I think the problem that it's facing is strictly superhero burnout where Iron Man didn't have any of that. So Iron Man had a leg up there, unfortunately, that Blue Beetle has to fight against. There have been 40 some odd superhero films between the two. And I think that Blue Beetle Mm -hmm. still, in spite of all of that, has the potential to rebirth and reboot the DC film universe in hopefully a way that makes us all forget about that fucking flash movie. (laughs) Before we get out of this, I wasn't necessarily saying I liked it better than the Shazam movie, but I didn't, I didn't enjoy one like I had since then, but to hear you say it, are you saying this is the best DC movie for you so far? Is there another one you liked better or is this the gold Hmm. standard you think? Uh, So Saying that is difficult. I'm not going to say it's the best DC film okay. because I think that's probably the first Wonder Woman. I think that's, that's probably yeah, that's pretty, yeah. the best DC film. However, this is the one that I've enjoyed the most. Okay. okay. Yep. Wonder Woman that. was a great film. And yeah. Gal Gadot, she did a tremendous job. Chris mm-hmm. Pine did a great job in mm-hmm. that film. Uh, Fair. I really liked that movie. I enjoyed Blue Beetle more. Okay. All right. I got to go see there it. There you go. What, what more do you need to know? <laughs> it's right up there with the top of the DC films. Thanks. Yeah, George. really. Hey, it's Spanish. And it's Verlaine. And we are Game Fix. Hey, where are you going to get the latest video game news and reviews? A- anywhere on the internet. No, no, no. Where, where are you going to get unfiltered opinions, brutal truths, and pretty much things nobody has the balls to say. Ah, then my friend, you're talking about us, the Game Fix Podcast. Damn right I am. If you want to join us for our takes on gaming news, honest gaming reviews, and celebrity interviews. Uh Oh, we're doing this rhyming thing? Well then get on your shoes, we'll eliminate your blues. Hey, you might end up with some really heavy clues. No, no, find our podcast on iTunes or our website at GameFixShow.com. Hey, maybe video games aren't your thing. I was a loser once too. We talk movies comics, toys. To convince you that everything that we just said is true, here's Duke Nukem. Cheers, love. The Calvary's here. No, 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 no. The other line, man. Take it from me, Duke Nukem. Either listen to the Game Fix podcast or go f*** yourself. I don't really care. Whoa! Whoa. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. It's gorgeous. Yeah, and it's just half the cost of a new kitchen. I can't get over it. It's just what you wanted. Oh, I could stay here forever. Excuse me, folks. It's closing time. Armstrong Kitchens is now offering your dream kitchen at just one half the cost of a new kitchen. That's right, just one half the cost. And it'll take just three days, but you must act now by calling 550-7070. That's 550-7070. I think it's time we call for an appointment. John, why don't you kick us off with today's tech and toys? Because you have something I'm not sure exactly what it is. Wait, wait, wait. What? Wait. Why don't I get to kick off? You don't have anything. Well, damn it. Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I was we trying were to literally avoid protecting the whole thing. you. <laughs> yeah. To <laughs> save you the embarrassment. <laughs> you dropped your britches and showed that you weren't uh, ready. No, that's fine. No, I'm happy to begin. Yeah. George just wants to be in the mix. That's all. Let him feel included. I just want to talk. <laughs> Uh, mine is pretty simple to talk about. It's it's a company that we've we've worked with before and we've known really well before. Super Impulse is a company that makes yeah. the world's smallest everything. 
right? The, the, <laughs> when you see, when you go to Cracker Barrel or you go to a convenience store and they have these super tiny things, you know, world's smallest mousetrap game, world's smallest mm -hmm. view master, whatever, all these old toys. And most of them actually yeah, work. Did we really need a world's smallest leaf blower? <laughs> Do they have that too? They I have that. I swear Seriously. to God. I, yes. I usually think that's for, maybe it's for dollhouses or something. I don't know. But they, they make oh, the world's smallest maybe. everything. Yeah. They even make, uh, we looked at a lot of their tiny arcades and micro arcades, right. little, like credit card sized and like three inch tall things. But they've started doing something a little bit new recently. And they had contacted me to say, John, would your audience like to? And I'm like, yeah, we'll take a look. Ironically, now you might know they've been doing super tiny sized action figures, which is like inside the package is a carded mm, action figure yeah. that's like an inch and a half tall, right? Okay. Well, they're taking a step back from that now. They're actually getting into the basically full size action figure line or toy line, like a pop vinyl kind of thing. They have a new line that they're just, they just nicknamed their 3.75 inch line, which is a way to get across that they're not super tiny, like regular toys, right? And they sent me a few to look at. And I posted them over on social media and Twitter and Facebook or X, whatever they're calling it now. Thanks, Elon Musk <laughs> and Facebook and posted over there. What they've done, the ones out of the gate they've started with is they've grabbed two really cool franchises that just maybe post Gen X, but certainly what Gen Xers would have enjoyed in college, Beavis and Butthead and hmm. the boy from South Park. So, ah, okay. so they're taking those guys and what they're doing is it's like a traditional action figure line. Again, action figure is not right. They're figures. They're not like articulated, but they're fully decorated, fully painted and molded. And Mo, I'll give you a link to check out online. Okay. I just thought it was really interesting that a company that's doubled and tripled down on how tiny can we make things has gone, oh, wait a minute. We can also make things that are regular sized because there's a huge <laughs> market, as I said, like Funko Pops and things like that. Of the few they sent me to look at, uh, I will definitely say they're of the same caliber of a Funko or anything else that you would see. Look great on a shelf, nice cards. I'm sure they're going to be in every FYE and toy store and everything all over the place. But keep an eye out for them because I, they weren't on my radar at all until they contacted me. And we're, we have a partnership with Super Impulse and uh, they were pretty cool to look at. So take a look yourself. If you like collecting stuff like that, they picked a couple pretty good franchises to, to get cooking with. I'm going to charge for You know, I think they're average like uh, seven, eight bucks or something. They're 40 dollars for the set of four for the, for the set so maybe amazon. they're like eight or nine bucks a piece i guess yeah okay. who knows what the what the markup right. is on amazon but yeah the standard prices for for little gadgets like that so cool. uh, so that's what i was looking at mo what about you i saw you had something pretty cool yeah it's uh so you know everyone's a lot of people working from home these days a lot of video conferencing right mm -hmm. and the lighting in my office where I do most of my video, my real work, <laughs> it's like variable, I guess, because as I move, you can see like things get light and dark behind me. Like it's constantly trying to adjust because I don't have any like a set light source. So I said, let me try to find like a small light I can stick on my you know monitor to kind of even things mm -hmm. out a little bit. So I did some digging on Amazon, of course, like everyone else does. And I found one from Logitech. It's called mm -hmm. uh, the LED streaming light by Logitech. Okay. Like, you know how the cameras sit at the top of your monitor? You know, like you have the little hook that mm -hmm. kind of hooks to the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. does the exact same thing. USB powered. It actually has a little app, so it'll turn on with your camera. You can have it set to turn on with your camera. So if your camera comes That's on, smart. light comes on, which is also mm -hmm. this, you know, your camera's on, which is handy. <laughs> oh, it has temperature settings and a pretty good set of like brightness levels too. You can set it for. It was sixty bucks. I said, okay, it's not horrible. Ooh, um, I saw some. Light, just, I saw some of the in the hundreds. So I, was, I couldn't understand what was special mm -hmm. about those. To be quite honest. But um, matter of fact, I'm using it now for this thing. I stuck it on Are here, you, yeah. so I, so I wouldn't put a light behind it. And I said it. It works really well. You said. It has variable brightnesses and stuff does it also mm -hmm. have like color temperatures like warm yep. and cool it does okay oh yeah 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 you can set warm yeah. cool and then it has a brightness and you can do it either from the back it has buttons that you can push to adjust it or it has an app you can do either way oh, oh that's cool all right yeah i i took a look at it while you were talking and i i like this one a lot it's very similar to what i already have that i'm actually using right now oh, okay. as well mm -hmm. it's that same kind of small little square you know yeah. like by three inches by three inches kind of size mm -hmm. but the thing that i like about yours a little bit better and i could probably do it with adapters and stuff because mine's got like what is that a quarter inch screw plus the sh the cold shoe mount kind of thing mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the bottom of mine but yours comes with that stand that clips onto the monitor, yeah. which makes it much more convenient. You can probably tilt and maneuver it a little bit easier than yep. I can with mine, which 
right now I literally just have resting precariously on my monitor. So <laughs> those knees. <sneeze. laughs> now I I also don't have the app control, which is nice that you talked about. Um, mm-hmm. This one does have a battery, so I don't have to have it plugged in. It'll last for hours and hours without. Oh, okay, but this one you have to have plugged in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of like yours. The only the only thing that's putting me back a little bit is just that it feels a slight bit higher than I would want to pay. Cause I think I saw yeah. that it was like $60. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm with you. Like I think at yep. 35, it would be an easy, purchase. it would be an easy buy. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you say app, do you mean a mobile app or do you mean an app on your computer? Cause it's plugged in USB on computer. or both or either on your computer. On computer. Okay. So it's on the device you're on. I was wondering yes. if you had to network it through the Wi-Fi or something. Oh, no, okay. No, yeah, that's so great. It's, you play USB, USB controls, USB power, you know, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And I'll share with people who don't have the benefit of what I see, which is not only are you lit well, the lighting is even because it's, yeah. is it diffuse mm-hmm. somehow? Like it, there's no hot spots on you. It's, it's a diffuse light. Yeah. That, so. so many places you get a light that's, it's a light. Sure. And it's like, oh, my retinas, right? You can't, yeah, right. you can't even look into it. you get this it. big hot spot so in the middle of your head. Exactly. And I don't see that <laughs> yeah. on you at all, which really was remarkable. Yeah, it was good. And I agree. I mean, 60 bucks, I was like, eh, it took me, mm-hmm. I agonized over that much. And but I did see some that were like literally like 120, 140. And what? I'm like, for a light. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. Maybe what are you professional doing? YouTubers or something. You just, I, I don't know. I think this one would work, I think, for Still, anybody. I think it's more what the market is willing to pay kind of a scenario. Mm-hmm. Every time somebody comes out with one, they can bump theirs up five or ten bucks mm. because it's the latest, greatest kind of product in this realm. And everybody wants to be a goddamn content creator. These <laughs> days. So because everybody fool, wants fool, to be a content fool. creator. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, I, I was watching even a video like two nights ago. It was a short and this girl had Mark Cuban, the, you know, the billionaire guy mm-hmm. from Shark Tank, yeah. had him on her podcast and he, they were just kind of sitting on the floor, which I found very odd because he's like six, four or some shit. He's a mm-hmm. big guy. She was like, yeah, I really believe in my podcast. I'm definitely in debt on it. I went in debt. The fuck are you in debt on a free thing? Yeah. This girl borrowed $40,000 from her bank to buy all the type of stuff that you're talking about. For 60 bucks. Wow. And well, I wow. think she bought a few more. Than she, <laughs> <Apparently. won. laughs> she, she bought the high end lights, I guess. I yeah. guess. If, you, if you're looking for a good, just solid, I, it just feels, it feels solid. Like it's going to last a while. So I, I think it's a pretty good option, but I agree. 60 bucks. It's, uh, it took me a while mm. to decide to buy it. Yeah. How, how long did it sit in your cart? Did you have to keep looking at it coming back? And- a couple, a couple days, actually. <laughs> a couple times. I, mean, <laughs> yes. I, I get that. Yeah. I'm sitting there. I'm like, uh, it's on the cart. And I took it out, bought some else, put it back. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words, a podcast that presents the unvarnished, unsanitized truth of what we have asked of those who defend this nation. As a country, we need these stories more than ever. Stories from Americans who have borne the battle, including 30-year-old remastered interviews with veterans from World War I recounting their time in the trenches of Europe, and with veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and from our most recent conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other battlefields Americans may never have heard of. Hear their stories by listening to Warriors in Their Own Words wherever you find podcasts. Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. Friends, you have to hurry. Our 1% over factory invoice sale on all pickups in stock is ending this Sunday right here at Hayward Nissan in Hayward. Look at this truck, a brand new 1986 and a half Nissan pickup. Now, at 1% over factory invoice, you pay only $6,041. Now remember, at 5.7% financing, you pay only $139 a month. Let's pick up the phone and let's call the hotline. Do it now, 538-4610, or we'll see you here at Hayward Nissan. This is the main event of the podcast for the three in attendance locally and the millions listening around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! All right, time to talk about games. We're going to start mm-hmm. off with Mo today. Mo, what game are you going to talk about? <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't have anything in the list either. Fuck you. No, you know, I, 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 
did not call attention out to George. Right, right. George called attention to himself, and, and then he called attention to Mo just to make himself not look so so guilty by association. I mean, honestly, I, I've been playing Baldur's Gate, and the only the other game war. I played is the one John's going to talk about. So, oh, okay, all right. Well, enough of Mo talking. All right, so. <laughs> I'm going to move into my game just because I want to get it out of the way, because I do want to hear about the game that John played and wants to talk about with the Mm -hmm. audience. I played a game called Chess Ultra. I found this as one of the free games on my Epic account. You know how Epic every week they give you one or two free games. Oh, yeah. And this was apparently one of the ones in there. I I was struggling trying to find a game that wasn't Oxen Free 2 because from the last podcast, you guys might remember, that's when I started playing it. I've honestly been playing that one really? pretty much exclusively. So and I'm power, like, well, yeah. I need to find a different game for my segment. So I'm looking around, nothing in my Steam library called out to me. So I said, well, let me go look at my Epic library. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I love chess. Mm. Let me see how this company does it. Well, there is a twist with this one, as John alluded to in the tease. The king of the game of kings, whatever, the the difference with this, they want you to play it in VR. Okay. And when I say they want you to play it, I mean they want you to fucking play this game in VR. Because as soon as I loaded the game, it tried to start my Steam VR application. Oh, okay. okay. It really wanted you to play VR. Immediately. Mm-hmm. I, I found that a little disconcerting. I'm like, wait, you're Epic Game Store, not Steam. What the fuck are you doing yeah, with my right. Steam oh, stuff? Yeah. Oh, That's I didn't make that point. connection. That's not yeah, even Steam. Too, right? okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's odd. So I'm like, all right, fine. Well, I said, let me just play it on the screen because VR is only one of the playable options, right? Mm-hmm. You can play it on the screen and there's, you know, all these different modes. There's single game, there's online, there's tournament. It's a really beautiful interface. You guys know that I have a fairly powerful GPU and gaming computer because mm-hmm. I spent a lot of money with that company that you guys bought your PCs from. Pretty new. Yeah. Couldn't handle this fucking game. What? This a is a chess free game? Chess game on Epic Store. Yes. Free game on what? Epic Store. Stuttering video. Terrible controls. I purposely lost the first match against a 1000 something IQ computer, you know, the chess rating system Mm -hmm. thing, like the lowest rating I could pick. I purposely lost the game just to get the fuck out of it because I couldn't figure out how to quit the game mid game. (laughs) Oh, man. <laughs> and I just turned the game off and uninstalled it after five minutes. Yeah. Wow. I'm done. That's horrible. Yeah. You've almost got to think. Look, we know you have a gaming rig capable of yeah, modern absolutely. games and some. This yeah. has got to be the game is not optimized properly or knows how to That's use the chipset or or something. something. Because there's Something's wrong. No reason. A chess game. And I looked yeah. at the trailer for the video because I saw you were going to be doing or it. It really wants that VR thing. That's the only thing. I, I didn't try the VR stuff. I didn't try but, it through that. So maybe it really wants that. You shouldn't but, have to. Yeah, but yeah I, I mean, mean, you know, yeah. Like if you're going to move one of your chess pieces, what do you mm-hmm. think? You put your click cursor over the chess piece, yeah. click it, and, and then mm-hmm. click maybe onto the space or, you want to move it or yeah. drag, right? Yeah, one or two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, nah. I did that like five times before I finally got the click to register. Oh. It's fucking it's, awful. It's a chess game. And at first I thought it was just me, but no. It's not a good find for somebody who loves chess just to pick up a game and start right. playing. I wanted yeah. to enjoy it. I wanted to play with other people. I miss playing chess, and I wanted to find a way to do that easily on my computer. There are other games out there. Definitely go pick one of them. Even though this is free, <laughs> it's not worth the fucking price. Mm. So, Jeez. That's I true. wonder yeah. if they just spent all their time and effort on the VR part and just ignored the part that wasn't VR. Maybe that's Maybe. the problem you ran into. But either know. way. Yeah. But oh, well. Yeah, I'm they've, sorry. they've got that some stinks. work to do if they want <laughs> me to enjoy a free game because I did not enjoy that. One. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> all right. Enough talking about shitty games. John, the game <laughs> that you're talking about, everybody seems to be enjoying. I don't own it yet, but I know Mo obviously talking about it earlier. Mm-hmm. You've been playing it, so yeah. get us up with a really good game to finish us off. Yeah, it's a really good, not top-notch game. It, it has room for improvement, but it's I really am enjoying it. Uh, the game is called The Entropy Center. Entropy as in, you know, uh, time travel and paradoxes mm. and stuff like that, and chaos and entropy and you know that kind of thing. It's a first person puzzle game. Think Portal. If you think Portal, you understand 75% yeah. of this game already, right? So 
You have this special gun that does things. Essentially, the concept of the entropy center is they're harvesting your brain power. The effort it takes for you to figure out these complex time puzzles is the energy they're using to power this machine. Not like you're plugged into it. They literally say, don't share the solutions with anybody else that works in the entropy center. Because then if you already know how it doesn't, you know, we don't gather as much energy. Reminds me <laughs> of the uh, the laugh floor in Monsters, Inc. Like how laughter was oh. powering things. <laughs> right. It's like your brain power figuring out this weird stuff is what's powering things. And like Portal, it also goes kind of like room by room. You go to a room, yeah. you have a puzzle, you solve it, a door opens and you move on to the next kind of, and they're analyzing you. Beyond that, it's a little more like Portal 2 though, if you remember where like more it was so. in disarray and kind of crumbling. Mm. And I keep comparing this to the Portals. It's only about 80% the polish of a Portal game. The Portal from Steam are just of some amazing just presentation. There's a little, some clunky stuff. Some of the platforming is a little clunky, but overall, here's the way it works. You have this gun that can rewind certain things in time. Not everything, just certain things. And the way the mechanics work, you have boxes and you have switches, just like in Portal, right? Mm -hmm. What you can do with your gun is make those things rewind. So maybe there's this, uh, there's like a, an archway that opens into a, an area that's collapsed. You shoot the archway and it uncollapses, right? So you rewind it in time. And anything that has this special coating on it, you can do that. And these boxes have it. So let's imagine I need to put a box on switch A and then switch B and then switch C. But I can't be there because I'm across the room. Well, what I do is I put it on C, then B, then A. Then I go across the room and I shoot it to rewind to what it was sitting on B. Then I jump and do what I have to do. Then I shoot it to rewind it to where it was sitting on C. I know this sounds confusing and kind of chaotic. And it did to me when I watched the trailer. But as soon as you play a couple of levels, you go, oh, I get it. Here's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those games that once you get through a level, you're like, I am a damn genius. Bow before <laughs> me because I figured out what should make no sense whatsoever. Yeah. On top of that, there's this story of the reason the Entropy Center exists is they have this mythology where the Earth is constantly being destroyed. <laughs> Entropy Center is on the moon. So maybe there was a, I don't know, there was a catastrophic Cataclysm, fire. Yeah. Something happened. Well, they see what's happening. They rewind the earth with this entropy gun to a couple days before wow. the disaster. They message officials on the earth to tell them how to avoid the disaster. Done. And they've done this as you play through the game. You read these documents. They've done it like 70 times. The earth <laughs> has ended so many times. Well, what's happening now is the Entropy Center is empty. You're the only person there except the robots that guide you and you on your own need to gather enough energy to save the earth from this asteroid that punched right through it out the other side. Ooh. And that is the premise of the game. Fun puzzle solving, interesting story, weaving a narrative. I've really been enjoying it. Yeah, I haven't played as much as you, um, but mm -hmm. it's it's definitely more, like they get you more into the story than like Portal. Mm -hmm. Like Portal is just, at first it's just puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. And then right at the end, you kind of get yes. off script yes, yes, and yes. you kind of do some stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But this one, you're kind of off script right from the start. Like you're going through this, the building itself and things are missing and there are people and plants growing everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. There's a scene at the beginning, which I thought was really cool. You're kind of walking through like some catwalks and things are collapsing on you. And yeah. as they said, and you hit it with your gun to reverse it so you can get under it in time to keep it from mm -hmm. killing you, you know, and yeah. things like right. that. You can, you can stand on a thing you're rewinding in time. Like if yeah. there's a collapsed thing, you stand on it, shoot it with your and gun it and you it lifts you up like an elevator. Yeah. But I, I told John about it. I said, wow, it seems really fun. I says, this seems like it could get really hard really quickly. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it does. <laughs> But so it's fun though. It's clever too. I, I do like mm -hmm. with this, but it definitely is a portal ish kind of game. Yeah. Based on the way that you two are describing it, I got one comment, one question. The first comment okay. is you're talking about the story driven element and being really happy with it. It kind of feels from the way you're describing the story and the environment and the landscape a little bit portal meets Bioshock maybe because you know, you're abandoned, you're in this place all by yourself and things could possibly kind go of. wrong. I'm not saying it's horror ish like Bioshock, but yeah, you know, that kind of isolated feeling like a 25% injection of Bioshock in it. Not, right. not as much depth like that, but yes, certainly some, but then the other question that may be more important to those of us who don't own the game, yet is how much did it cost? Oh, well, you know that I'm currently unemployed, so I don't pay much for games. I figured. <laughs> That's why I wanted to This know. has been out, I think, a year, maybe two. I, I, I If I was a good podcast host, I'd have all those notes. I don't recall. It's not a brand new game, but it's been a short time. 
And I think I it was been on my wish list for a while. It was around 20 bucks. And then what happened is once again, Steam shot themselves in the foot. They sent me a message. This is on sale down from 20 to mm-hmm. 16. And I'm like, great. Let me go to, is there any deal where it's like 11.99 <laughs> or something where I pay even less right. for it? Uh, but I, I want to say it was probably 10 or 12 bucks is what I paid for it. And okay. I've played it easily six or seven hours already. And I think I'm only about halfway through. So it's right on so par. So you're probably going to get your Corys then. Yeah, I think so. And the other thing I'll yeah. note is Mo did say the progression of puzzles is difficult, but they introduce elements very slowly to you like Portal did. And the things that first get you is the reason you feel like a genius is the first couple of puzzles is like, oh, three switches, three boxes. No problem. You move stuff around. The next level will be like three switches, two boxes. Now you got to think a little harder. But Mm -hmm. then you get like into the midway through the game and it's all right, seven switches, a box. Enjoy. (laughs) I'm like, but wait, I need to switch there to lift this, but I need to be up there to do that. You end up having to like put something in seven or eight different places and remember those places. And it's not infinite rewind. You got to be economical about where you move it in time. Because I think an object only has like 30 seconds of rewind in it or something. But that's why it makes you feel so smart when you do solve it. (laughs) So I'm playing it on Steam. It's probably all over the place. But if you're looking for a puzzle game like a portal and maybe a little bit of story like Bioshock, like you said, for a discount game like this, it's been around for a while you could go a lot worse. You're, it's not chess ultra bad. I assure you of that. It runs really smoothly, <laughs> plays well. Right. Yeah, it, it works. It, it's, and it's a fun puzzle game that is worth checking out. Coming up on 5-Minute News, I'm Anthony Davis. You might think it's partisan because maybe it's critical of one side or the other, but it's not. It's just the truth. And I think that's also something that's kind of unusual for Americans listening to the radio or to podcasts because the news landscape in the States has been so partisan for so many decades. So 5-Minute News is verified, truthful, independent, unbiased and essential world news daily. If you're a diehard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. Hello, I'm McDonald Carey. As almost everyone does, I sometimes suffer from arthritic-like aches and pains brought on by tension and overwork. But I've discovered a wonderful solution to this type of suffering, which I'd like to share with you. It's this fantastic Niagara Roller Sodge Power Recliner with heat and patented cyclomassage therapy units. If you'll call the number on your screen right now, I'll mail to you all of the details on this amazing tension and pain relieving chair. I'll also include a free TV discount coupon, which will save you money. The Niagara chair works. Before we wind up this episode, you know, we always like to take just a moment here toward the end to talk about the things we're looking at right now or looking forward to between now and the next time we get together. And I have just a few that I'll start with. Uh, The first is another episode, I'll say, entry in the Conjuring film series. The Nun 2 is coming out September 8th. Oh, yeah. Now, The The Nun, not my favorite film in the Conjuring series, but the problem is it's like a Star Wars problem. Like, if you love Star Wars, you're going to watch all the stuff, whether it's great (laughs) or not. (laughs) The stuff that James Wan has done and with growing that Conjuring series, uh, he doesn't do all the films, but he's kind of in charge of it. He's kind of the Kevin Feige of the Conjuring series, if you will. The Nun, they always sprinkle a little uh, Easter egg stuff in there for people that love the other films. So I'm going to see it, I'm sure, even though the first (laughs) Nun was kind of meh. The next was a film that actually just came out the other day. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. It's out now, but I'd never heard of it. And it's the kind of insanity that I enjoy. It's a horror film called Slaughterhouse. I didn't Slaughter? mispronounce or slur, not Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse. Like sloth? Like This is like a horror movie about a sloth. Really? They take a really long time to kill you? <laughs> so from the trailer, it looks like this girl like adopts a pet sloth that she thinks will be an amazing pet, and it turns out to be a murderous sloth somehow, and it's chasing people around somehow. <laughs> Wait, don't ask. Hours. Okay, I'll This is how a monkey shines how could you for sloths? Is that what I'm I, hearing? Well, they do have big claws. So maybe eventually once they get to you, they can slowly stab you. I don't know. It looks the kind of crazy that I like. So Slaughter House, look, the odds are by the time I get around to watching it, it's going to be on streaming. But it was fascinating to me and it just came out a couple of days ago. So the thing I'm most looking forward to is relaxing of my current work chaos. So much has piled up on me. I know sometimes we look forward to vacations and things like that. You guys know I've been working for myself for several months and that's been going great. We have so much awesome stuff that's piled up that I have to get done. It's a incredibly tough work week for me. On top of that, we have a hurricane that's coming through town. Yeah, on top of that, that, my refrigerator freezer is on the blink. Regular house <laughs> stuff. 
So much is going on. It's good problems to have, but I can't wait to get back to semi-normalcy after this week is over. So that's definitely something that I am looking forward to. Mo, how about you? What do you got coming up? So I had a couple of things right now. Uh, one is a movie coming out, A Haunting in Venice uh, with mm-hmm. Kenneth Branagh. It's like, I guess this is Agatha Christie trilogy now, I yeah. guess he has. Because mm-hmm. he did Murder on the Express and Death on the Nile. I really oh. enjoyed both of those. Yep. Oh, this is the Poirot thing, right? Is yes, that another yes, one of those? Poirot. Oh, that's right. I yep, saw the trailer. He's playing Poirot yeah. again. So mm-hmm. looking for that, I mean, like I said, I, I've liked the previous two. So I have a feeling mm-hmm. this one would be as good, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, it can only yep. be so bad, right? Mm-hmm. And But probably what I'm really looking forward to is the return of Welcome to Wrexham. No. Nope. Yep. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. Yep. Bullshit. Yep. 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 Welcome no. to Wrexham season Fuck two. Off. Now, now, boys. You don't even like soccer until I brought it up two years ago. <laughs> I like this uh, show. It's called football. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> you didn't even know about the show till I brought it to you. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, you did. You. you brought it up. We appreciate I started it. watching it. I really liked it. So I look forward to the second Mm-mm. season. So thank you, George. Nope. This is, <laughs> no, fuck off. Nope. So, but yeah. Mm-mm. So it follows the exploits of the Wrexham team. So yeah. So Motherfucker, that's you're out. not going to give the whole goddamn description. Take my shit. <laughs> September 12th. <laughs> I swear to God. Just, just Getting in the fucking car. <laughs> so how about you, George? What are you looking forward to? Well, let me guess. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm looking forward first to FSU football returning. The specific reason why I'm looking forward to it returning is because we have had a bunch of crappy years here in Tallahassee. Mm-hmm. FSU football has fallen on hard times. Well, we finally got a coach that a has a great game plan for the university and for the football system. And B since we had fired or had quit several high profile, very expensive coaches, we couldn't afford to bring anybody else in. So they had to give this guy a time for his system to work finally. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is the first preseason year for, I think maybe close to a decade that we've been ranked inside the top 10. We're ranked number eight preseason, which is a really good honor. It shows how hard the team has worked and specifically this coach. He's kind of a Bobby Bowden throwback, like when Bobby Mm. Bowden was young. So, Everybody seems to be behind him. His approach is solid. I'm looking forward to that. Second thing I'm looking forward to, I can't believe John didn't pick up on it, but uh, Star Trek Lower Deck Season 4 comes out the day that this releases. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I honestly had to check because I'm like, did they release this thing early or something? What happened here? No, it's been a year since it's been on. I just, A, took a long time to finish Season 3, and B, had that episode of Strange New Worlds with those characters Mm -hmm. in it. That's right. Right. Yep. And so it felt like all these seasons of three and four were closer together to me, but I'm certainly looking forward to season four. I hope it'll go great. Absolutely. Great series. And then yep. finally, I'm looking forward to what is apparently Mo's favorite goddamn TV show now. Welcome to Wrexham <laughs> season oh, you two. Too? You like that show? Fuck off. <laughs> oh, <God>. Oak <laughs> the bear. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's Mo's right, though. It's a great series. It's a fun show. Ryan Reynolds uh, puts together this whole thing of production. It also has Rob McElhenney, who obviously got Ryan Reynolds into this thing in the first place. It was Mm -hmm. his assistant's idea to buy the soccer club, and then he slid into Ryan Reynolds' DMs (laughs) because he needed uh, whiskey money and superhero money and And all this stuff. So, (laughs) mobile money. And he got it. I think that the thing that I like the most about the show, though, is, yes, it's about the team and the process of trying to rebuild this once storied franchise. But it's more about the community Mm -hmm. and teaching Americans about not just soccer, but why soccer is so important to these people that live in uh, what are very trying conditions. Right. Like you wouldn't think of parts of England being third world. And I'm not trying to insult any of the people from Wrexham, but they, they have a hard time. Rough like, conditions. Yeah. Yeah. And they're still like volunteering to work at the stadium and spending all their money on season tickets. That's how important mm. it is to them. So I, I think I love the show for its heart more than anything. And I'm glad that Mo likes it enough to put it on his list. It's certainly going to be on my list, yeah. you know, as long as they keep making them. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, nice. they, are, they play in wow. Wales. I don't know. People in England may be upset by that. So they- <laughs> well, Wales is part of the United Kingdom. So I think you said England. But anyway, they- <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> Motherfucker, are you going to correct me now after you stole my shit? Fuck off. No, I was trying I to be nice to you at the end. No, actually, I agree with you, Georgia. It's it's seeing how important that team is to the entire community and mm-hmm. how, you know, when they're doing mm-hmm. bad, it's like the community is doing bad, you know, and, and you know, if they do better, I think everyone's going to feel like the they do morale, better. The whole morale, everything. Yeah. yeah and it's like, I see the people there, like that guy who owns the video store in season one, like Mm -hmm. I just want to rent tapes from him and have him send them over Mm. and I'll pay him whatever he needs because I just want to support (laughs) him and his community. Yeah. You know, the guy who has the bar, like just open me a tab and let some people drink for a night and I'll pay for it. That's fine. You know, (laughs) Uh, God bless those people. Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney are trying to do their part. And according to everything that I've not only seen on the show, but also in media coverage and YouTube videos and soccer matches on ESPN, because I've been following the team everywhere I theoretically could, they're doing a tremendous job as novice owners. Yeah. Mm. You know, I think if sport was more like that in the United States, I would be more interested in sport. Yeah. But it, it mm. doesn't have that same hyper local feeling for the locals. It feels more elitist yeah. with the, you know, the press box and the private boxes and the see all. Anyway, it's absolutely yeah, it's, it, it makes me think more about sport over there and how they play football than anything we do over here, even though I don't watch the show. Yeah. Like I kind of picked it up from uh, T- Ted Lasso, kind of that feeling, that patriotism mm-hmm. that's over there. Awesome. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Before we get out of this show, I would be remiss if I did not thank another brand new Patreon supporter. Ooh. Mike B popped mm. over to patreon.com slash Gen X grown up. And now Mike is from Canada. So he didn't give us any dollars. He gave us loonies or toonies or whatever they have in Canada. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> to- We'll take it. We uh, to help us out. Look, he enjoys the work that we're doing. He wants to support us, and he put his money where his mouth is and said, "I want to be a regular monthly pledge supporter of Gen X Grown Up." And we're so grateful that you did, Mike. You probably already know you're joining an astounding roster of just remarkable people that support Gen X Grown Up. If you would like to join Mike and all of his <laughs> friends, all you got to do is pop over to Patreon.com/slash Gen X Grown Up for as little as a dollar a month. You can become a regular supporter of Gen X Grown Up and make sure we keep doing what we do every week without fail. John, I just thought of something. Yes, sir. Not on the card, so I'm ad-libbing. I apologize, listeners. I want to throw a challenge out there to all the listeners because I'm going to do it myself. Okay. I want every Patreon member who supports us and loves us and takes care of us to try and find three new Patreon members for $1 each. Just three people willing to contribute a dollar a month. That wow. means, you know, talking about our podcast out there on your social media or with your friends or whatever, Ooh. just let them hear us, convince them, hey, it's just a buck a month. It's just one more dollar, as John it's used almost to tell me nothing. in the day. Right. It's, so, <laughs> it's <laughs> almost well, nothing. Dollar. <laughs> What's it? It's a dollar. What's it? It's a waffle theme. If all of our patrons got three new $1 people to join us in this quest, John, it would be very close mm-hmm. to getting you to that level of constantly being able to do this full time without having mm-hmm. to worry about bills. Yeah. And, and not saying that I don't want you to succeed, but even if you try and fail, mm-hmm. look at the exposure you have helped to give us. That's an yeah. amazing yeah. challenge, George. I love it. Thank you for that. Yeah. Let us know how it goes. Let us know, <laughs> let us know the pushback you get for people to go, what? An internet thing oh, that's yeah. free? We're not paying for that. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's going to get mad, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's yeah. fine. Well, that's I want to hear the story. So speaking of our patrons, though, so you know we started a thing where mm-hmm. our patrons get to ask us a question that all three of us oh, have yeah. to answer at the end of our episode. Right. So mm-hmm. this week's question is from our one of our favorite guys, Butter Spider. Hey, yeah. all right, Butter. A longtime supporter of the show, awesome person all around. And his question is, if you had a time machine, okay. where would be the first place you would go? Would you go back in time? Would you go forward? Would you revisit the 80s? Would you go visit Renaissance England? Would you check in your great-grandchildren? What would you do hmm. if you had a time machine? What was the first thing you'd punch into that flux capacitor? So, mm. let's see. Who am I throwing this one first? How about you, John? Do you have anything? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy. 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 There are all kinds of places I could go for curiosity, for interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, kill Hitler. Yeah, all the things that <laughs> average people do. But, I, look, I, I don't want to cause any ripples to damage the timeline other than how it would benefit me in general. And that is, <laughs> I would go back to the early 90s. Every day, every day, I kick myself for not starting a YouTube channel the day YouTube started. <laughs> <laughs> I even think of just the three or four years before I started this one that I missed out on that I could have been building something. I would have loved to realize, had, yes, I could get lottery numbers or whatever, but if I could go back and start what I'm doing.
doing now back then, A, it would be an empire that would be unstoppable. And B, who knows what, right? It would definitely be sustainable. I would just like to, because I found I enjoy what I'm doing right now so much that I wish that's what I'd been doing for the last 30 years, but I didn't because I didn't know it was a thing you could do. Yeah. So that's probably where yeah. I would go because I get so much satisfaction out of that thing. Yes, lottery, you know, lottery tickets, things like that you could do. <laughs> but I think the, the satisfaction I would get out of just doing that longer and more sustainably would be the reward I needed. So that's, that's probably what I would do first if okay. that was the first thing I could do. Nice. How about you, George? Well, first of all, for John, you know, you could do several things in that trip. You could start the YouTube channel. You could buy a lottery ticket. You could invest in some uh, companies that right. you know are going to take a or something, right? I could do all yeah, that. Yeah, just, right. ha- just take care of all of it right Sell there. AOL. So, you know, going back to the 90s makes a lot of sense. Uh, for trip, me, yeah. though, <laughs> honestly, the first time in place that I would go uh, to spend some time and feel the environment would be late 1940s Los Angeles. Mm, right, Los Angeles. I, yeah, I love that whole era of post-World War II, the whole neo-noir film kind of stuff mm, cops okay. and robbers mob yeah. you know los angeles becoming the thing that we know now um i would i would go there because i really every time i talk to somebody from that era which is you know obviously rare and rarer these days yeah um or every time i see a documentary about that time or watch a film that's based in that time zone or a tv show or anything I, I just feel like I'm drawn to it. It feels like it's a part of my DNA. So I I think I would really love that late 1940s mm. Los Angeles vibe. And George, that's the heyday of radio and radio dramas and radio comedy yeah. and stuff that kind of- Absolutely. That, that was just transitioning. I love that's Oh man, you can see that. We could hear that firsthand. You could be involved mm-hmm. in the War of the Worlds broadcast by, H, by Orson you know? Wells, right? <laughs> man. Oh, yeah. Actually, maybe All it's right. 40. Anyway, cool. it's awesome. Awesome. Good, good, yeah, good that's call. Cool. I love it. So yeah, this, this is a tough one because there's a lot of places you can go, obviously, right? A ton of places sure. you can go. Um, but mine, actually, I would probably go probably 1920s Ooh. Mississippi and visit my grandmother when she was young and Oh, and wow. all my older relatives and get just a whole bunch of history that we just don't know. Because oh, I was like, very worried for you at first because you said 1920s Mississippi. I'm like, are you oh, looking yeah. I'd be, to get I'd lynched? be on the farm, so I'd be okay. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> right, we have, right. you know, farm, we'd be there. Mm-hmm. And that's where everyone lived too. But just there's just a lot of like family history that just sort of got lost mm-hmm. um, and yeah. stories and stuff that some of it was just verbal stories that, you know, like you said, George, that gets rare and rare as we get on and yep. people have let yep. go. Just to be able to catch up and find that information out, you know, about that whole side of my family mm-hmm. and how things got there and what they were like even like personally because mm-hmm. sure again you hear a couple stories but you don't really know what the person was like yeah. maybe they were jerks I don't know but I find out so <laughs> that's, that's where I'd go to All right. so but that's well, great cool. those are some great answers guys and really hey thanks Spider, Spider for that question so again if you guys have a question out there if you're a patron please just drop us a message and maybe we'll get to it our next show we'll get to it nice thanks Mo okay guys that's gonna wrap it up for this edition of the show don't worry we'll be back in two weeks with another one but next Next week is our backtrack where we pick a single nostalgic topic and dig in deep. And we're going to take a tour around our <laughs> 70s and 80s home, looking at all of the household decor that oh is indicative gosh. of that era, whether it be the shag or the colors or the formica the tops or the paneling, whatever. <laughs> we're going to remember the home decor that we had growing up as kids. You won't want to miss that one. I hope to see you there. Until then, I'm John. George, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you. Always fun, man. Fourth listener, it's you we all appreciate most of all, though. We can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. No more washing shows till sunrise. Unacceptable for grown-ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown-up. Uh, what's the guy from sunny Philadelphia that's the main guy that got him into it? What's his name? Oh, um, oh crap. I haven't watched that either, so I can help you. He, uh, he's also the main guy on the programming show that you like, John. Yeah. Um, the programming show. Okay, I can say real quick. Oh, uh, uh, Thomas Middleton? Rob Rob McElhenney. Me- Rob oh, McElhenney. Okay. There you go. Oh, okay. Yep. Five, four, three. Hey, it's Spanish. And it's Verlaine, and we are Game Fix. Hey, where are you going to get the latest video game news and reviews? A- anywhere on the internet. No, no, no. Where, where are you going to get unfiltered opinions, brutal truths, 
and pretty much things nobody has the balls to say. Ah, then, my friend, you're talking about us, the Game Fix Podcast. Damn right I am. If you want to join us for our takes on gaming news, honest gaming reviews, and celebrity interviews... Uh Oh, we're doing this rhyming thing? Well, then get on your shoes. We'll eliminate your blues. Hey, you might end up with some really heavy clues. No, no. Find our podcast on iTunes or our website at GameFixShow.com. Hey, maybe video games aren't your thing. I was a loser once, too. We talk movies comics, toys. To convince you that everything that we just said is true, here's Duke Nukem. Cheers, love. The cavalry's here. No, 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 no. The other line, man. Take it from me, Duke Nukem. Either listen to the Game Fix podcast or go f*** yourself. I don't really care. Whoa! Whoa.